Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, on Friday night, I was at a star party kind of event. Uh, you know, there was all the usual tools of the trade, telescopes, star charts, and green laser pointers. The green laser pointer has been a revolution in teaching people about the night sky, because normally, if you want to point people at something and you just point your finger at it, there's a perspective issue. You know, people see di the finger in different places depending upon where they're standing, but with the green laser pointer, it's like a lightsaber. It forms a ghostly pale green trail of light from your fingers all the way up to the whatever you're pointing at. Now, during the event, a satellite flew over. Meteor B, it was a Russian, uh, I think it's a Russian weather satellite. Anyway, um, lots of laser pointers converged upon it as everybody wanted to make sure their friends knew where this satellite was. And I got to thinking, if you were in space, could you actually see these laser pointers on the ground? So legally in the US, laser pointers have to have a power of less than five milliwatts. You can sell more powerful lasers, but you're not allowed to call them laser pointers legally. And I'm gonna point out it's also illegal and very stupid to point any lasers at aircraft because you can temporarily blind or dazzle parties. But you know, at astronomy events, people will point out things in orbit which may have people in them, including the space station. So would an astronaut in orbit be able to see this laser if it was pointed at the, the space station? So assuming it was pointed correctly, the green laser pointer, they use a diode pumped solid state laser and the typical one will produce green light with photons of a wavelength of 532 nanometer. Now, according to the photon energy rule, uh, you basically divide you know, 1.2398 by the wavelength in uh, micrometers and you get the energy in electron volts. So yeah, 1.2398 divided by 0.532 is 2.33 electron volts. So a five milliwatt laser would generate roughly 1.33 times 10 to the 16 photons per second. That is 10,000 trillion, or sorry, yeah, sorry, 13,000 trillion photons per second. The next question is then, how many of those photons would reach the space station? So what you have to do now is figure out how wide the laser beam would be by the time it reaches the space station. Now lasers are often portrayed as perfectly parallel beams of light, but because of the wave nature of light and the finite size of the optics, the beam will actually diverge as distance increases. A good quality laser pointer might have a divergence of 1.2 milliradians, or that's 0 0.07 degrees. So it's more correct to think of the laser beam as a very narrow cone of light. At 100 meters, the laser spot would be about 12 centimeters across. Now the space station orbits around 400 kilometers, so let's use about 500 kilometers for our brightest estimate. That gives us a bit of leeway as the space station moves over, the, over our heads. Uh, and so yeah, at that distance, 500 kilometers, the beam would now be about f uh, 600 meters across. That's wide enough to actually cover the entire space station and a fair chunk of space around it. And roughly that's 283,000 square meters. So if you divide out the number of photons that we had, that gives us 47 billion photons passing through each square meter of the space station. And it sounds like a lot, but the pupil in the human eye is actually really, really tiny. It's only a few millimeters across. So obviously only a tiny fraction of those would go through the eye. But astronomers, we actually like to measure star brightness in magnitudes. And the rough rule of thumb that I kind of have in my head is that a zeroth magnitude star corresponds to about 10 million, sorry, 10 billion photons per square meter. And that's visible magnitude. So you know, ignore the photons are outside the range of human perception, the infrared and the ultraviolet. And guess what? This green laser light is right in the middle of this late range, so none of that light goes to waste. So yes, 47 billion versus 10 billion, that's good, you know, one and a half magnitudes. Uh, so that's magnitude minus one and a half. That's as bright as the star Sirius, the brightest star that we see in the sky other than the sun. But... 
That's assuming that the laser could be pointed accurately enough at the station. And handheld laser pointers aren't really set up for that. Not only is the precision required high, but the target is also moving. I mean, look, here's a video I took of the space station passing in front of the sun. Look at how my wobbly old man hands have a hard time keeping the sun in the middle of the frame. Now imagine tracking that space station at the speed that it's moving. But look, given the right tools, humans can reliably point with the precision required. Specifically, sharpshooters in competitions will happily hit targets that are a few centimetres across at 100 metres. So that's, you know, that's accurate enough, although that doesn't account for the tracking that would be required to hit a mobile target. So at best, an astronaut might see a green star flickering on and off at star parties as those laser pointers whip around and occasionally end up pointing exactly the right direction. Now, of course, a wider beam makes things easier, but as the beam gets wider, it makes it fainter. The other problem is that if you can see the space station in the sky, if it's lit up, then it's daylight for the space station. It's in sunlight, so the crew are going to have a hard time seeing any lights on the ground because of the brightness of the sun. Which means that if you want your dinky little handheld laser pointer to be visible, you need to aim it accurately at the station while it's still in the dark. So you won't even know where to aim it. But if you had a robotic mount that knew exactly where to point it and could keep it pointing in the right direction, tracking the motion of the space station, then yes, an astronaut who knew what they were looking for could see that cheap laser pointer. As it happens, an experiment like this was already performed on the space station. The San Antonio Astronomy Association wanted to see if searchlights could be used to communicate with the space station. So they had a pair of 800 lumen searchlights that were pointed by hand, but so they knew where to point it, they had a robotic tracking mount with a blue one watt laser that was pointed at the station. So they could see where this was and they could track it manually. Then to actually create a signal, they had people hold boards over the lights so that they could turn the lights on and off quickly. Anyway, on the space station, astronaut Don Petit was expecting for this. He was looking for it and he was actually easily able to see it. He could actually see the laser way before they had the searchlights pointed in the correct direction. This was over a thousand kilometers away. It was easy for him to see and there's a great picture of it. So anyway, the upshot of this is, yes, you could see that cheap commodity laser from the space station. And if you had the right hardware, yes, you could actually modulate it and send a signal. But the good news is you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't blind the astronauts. You wouldn't have any worries about that because it wouldn't be any brighter than the brightest stars in the sky. Uh, of course, if there's anything closer to home like aircraft, please don't point lasers at them. That's a really bad idea. <laughs> I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.